line at the mission of the month at our nbrc.com backslash giving. The scripture is from John chapter 1, verse 19 to 28, and it reads like this. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am, the Messiah. I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. This is the word of the Lord. Good grief, now I can't speak. On this third Sunday of Advent, we come to John the Baptist. We come to the one who was called to prepare the way for the Savior, the Messiah. And we hear in the words of John the Baptist, we hear of his powerful testimony and witness such that others are seeking him out Others are concerned and worried that he's going to upset those Jewish leaders and their powerful apple cart that they've got. And so these Jewish leaders send others to question John, to say, are you the one? Are you the one that we have been long awaiting? The one we have been expecting and hoping and believing and dreaming Are you hoping and dreaming and believing for a Savior and a Messiah to come this Christmas? You see, we have retrospect of some 2,000 years to be able to look back on this story and say, oh, of course, it was the humble carpenter's son born in a manger from Nazareth and Galilee, of course that's the one that would be the Messiah. But I think for us, we may too find ourselves, if we're honest, thinking back some 2,000 years ago, saying, that couldn't possibly be. You know, at least John the Baptist had this following initially, Maybe he's the one that we should seek out and we should pursue and find and follow. To which John responds in our scripture today, I am not the one, but he quotes the words of Isaiah. He says, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord. And this message from Isaiah, I want to just give us a little bit of context to it. For where John quotes this from is part of a larger whole that speaks to the Israelite people who are struggling, who are going through some stuff, Anybody going through some stuff at the moment? Again, if we are longing and hoping and dreaming and believing for a Savior, I don't know that the people of Israel were necessarily dealing with a pandemic. 
I don't know, maybe, and I think quite likely, yes, they were maybe dealing with some economic hardship. They were dealing with a community or a struggle or a place where they felt marginalized, where they felt like they couldn't live as freed people, where they couldn't live and enjoy and wonder and walk about in the glorious blessings of God. And so in this context of Isaiah that John points us to, listen to these additional verses that provide some information to what life was like for them. Comfort, comfort, O my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her turn, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for her sins. It wasn't good for them. And this is where John speaks. A voice cries out, in the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert highway a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill shall be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all the people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. I could almost ask Pam to go back to the, the Jamaica slides and think about the potholes on the road, or for those who have a chance, who have had a chance to travel to the Holy Land before some of this imagery of every valley be lifted up and every mountain made low is a description of the journey in Jerusalem and maybe the journey in Jamaica or maybe the imagery of how we might feel today. Longing, hoping, believing, and dreaming for a Messiah that could just improve this path that we're on. That we don't have to be watching where we place one foot in front of the other quite so much that we'd be concerned that we might slip or fall or step into it. And yet, this message of John the Baptist, spoken from years ago, referencing Isaiah the prophet, not only is a message of the coming one, but I believe for us, it's also a challenge or a message for us to prepare the way for others. You see, this message of John the Baptist, as he speaks to the people in the Gospel of John, he's a little more delicate. If you know any of the other gospel references that talk about the, the message of John the Baptist, John the Baptist doesn't necessarily bite his tongue as he warns the people and calls them to prepare for the Messiah to come. He says, look at your lives a second. How are you living? In Luke, he says something to the effect of, if you are one who has means, share it with others. If you are the one who has abundance, make sure that you are thinking of others. And he talks to the tax collectors and the soldiers of the day and reminds them not to be extortionists and not to be those who mistreat and take advantage of others. And so as I think of this message for us today, I think for some of us, we hear this message of this coming Savior and this hope for our world, and it can't come soon enough. For others of us, we may reflect on this message, and, and we may need to hear that other side to John's call and plea, and say, if we're honest, there are people who have it a lot harder and a lot worse than us. 
And so maybe we need to take an account and look at things and say, how can we, maybe not being confused with the Savior to come like John the Baptist was, but how can we prepare the way? How can we make straight the path? How can we pave over some of those potholes? And so, North Branch, I want to thank you for how you have done that in some ways. And I want to challenge you and call you to think about how else in these still couple of weeks leading up to Christmas, how we might prepare the way for that Messiah to come, that in your word, that others might see the hope and the promise of our Savior's birth. You've heard the possibility to give to Jamaica. You've heard about the possibility to give to Learning Gate gift cards. Some of you, I heard, I think Nicole, is Nicole in here? She's probably hiding somewhere where I can't see her right now. But she was organizing, writing some Christmas cards for some of our River's Edge residents, lonely seniors. And I think within, I'm going to call on you, Nicole, within a matter of hours or at most days, we had over 100 volunteers or 100 cards that people volunteered to prepare and write for. I got that about right? Less than a day, over 120 cards. How you prepared the way. Some of you have received maybe on your doorstep or with a visit, or you may be expecting some of our congregation members. Your elders have agreed to go out and deliver, I think, almost some 250 candy canes to church folks to prepare the way for our Savior, the Messiah. And these are the words that are attached to this candy cane that will be delivered. Look at a candy cane, what do you see? Stripes that are red like the blood shed for me. White for my Savior, who's sinless and pure. J is for Jesus, my Lord, that's for sure. Turn it around and a staff you will see. Jesus is my shepherd, come for me. North Branch, these are just a few of the ways that you have used your blessings, that you, like John the Baptist, have begun to prepare the way, and many more from writing cards to baking cookies. And I urge you to, especially in this year where we may feel the need all the more for a Savior to come, where your normal traditions and routines are not going to be what we would want them to be. The same is true for others. And so, as John the Baptist, I urge you to prepare the way for the Savior to be born this Advent and Christmas season. Will you pray with me? Oh Lord Jesus, we hear this message of John the Baptist and sometimes it may seem like a story from years ago. And yet, we know that in our hearts and in our day today, that we need to prepare the way for you to be born again, Lord Jesus. Help us to see and to know the places in our hearts and in our lives where we need you to come, where we can go and serve others that we might bring this good news and hope for a Savior this day and this year. It's in Jesus' name that I pray and all God's people say.